So, got the lightning and clouds now. The next thing we need to do is to start getting the text. So, this is the type tool down here. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to use Arial. Yep, yeah, it's already on Arial. Perhaps about size 14 and white. Okay, so here are all my text options. And I click onto this main workspace. And I'm going to type in Storm Tracker, all in capital letters. Okay, there's Storm Tracker. Now, with it still flashing and highlighted, I'm going to drag across it, Control C to copy it, click on the end so you can still see it flashing, and press Control and V to paste it a lot of times. Okay? I go to my arrow tool again. And now I can move it into place, okay? So this is going to create a little band of the storm tracker. Okay? With that done, by holding down Alt, you can see my arrow changes to two arrows. And that's going to copy that. So I can just quickly drag another one into place, okay? And that's duplicated the layer. Right, now I need the big storm tracker across the background here. So I click into there again. And I'm going to use the impact font this time a nice bold font. You want to be using some bold fonts for this. So I select the impact and I'll type in storm tracker again. There we go. And this time I'm just going to press control and T and bring it out. Now you'll see that I can move it around like this yeah, and that's um, allowing me to adjust the aspect of it. But if I hold down shift it'll keep it all within it's actual, it's actual aspect ratio, okay? So there we go, that's looking pretty neat actually. There we go. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, as I said before, in Adobe CS 2.0, I can actually, if you look at my layers down here, if I just uh, bring that up and extend it down a bit, hold on. You can see I can actually select here all my layers which I want to move at the same time. You cannot seem to do that in 1.5 unfortunately. So if as as if I was using 1.5 at the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click now and rasterize the types, okay? So I right click rasterize type, right click on the next one, rasterize type, right click on this one, rasterize type, okay? And then I select the top one again. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press control and E to merge them down so they're one whole layer. Okay, so that's one whole layer. And then I'm just going to bring the opacity down to somewhere around 37, 30 ish, 37. Yeah, that'll do. That's okay. Okay, so now we're going to create the 3D text, which is a really, really, really cool effect. Okay, and I really like this. Um, so I've created a new layer. I don't actually need to create a new layer there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the type tool. And I'm still on impact, yeah I want impact again. Um, and I'm just going to type in storm. Okay. Now, control and T and get it to the size that I want. Interesting, you can tighten up the kerning, and the kerning is the separation between the letters. And I can tighten up by getting my type tool, clicking in between it, holding down Alt and using the arrow keys left and right to just tighten it up a bit and I'm just gonna I'm gonna tighten mine up a little bit all the way along so clicking between them just tighten them up a little bit okay that looks good go back to my arrow tool which will okay that so I've got storm get my type tool again click down here and I want tracker and I'm not gonna do this in capitals this time Okay, control T and expand it out a bit. Okay, well, uh, just to decide where I want it. Probably want that K just on the end of the M there. Yeah, that looks okay. So I've got my storm tracker. Now, what I'll need to do is I'll need to move these together and off the screen just a moment so I've got a bigger workspace to work on. 
Um, what you'll need to do on yours is to lock layers, okay? Um, to do it, and you'll notice you'll have another little layer here where you can click in between to lock the layers. For the purpose of this exercise, I'm just going to rasterize them again. Uh, so you can rasterize your two types as well once you're happy with them. Rasterize your types and merge them together, Control and E. Okay, so I've now got my two to the, there, and I can just move them off to the side. Okay. Now I'm going to create the numeric sort of logo. So I create myself a new layer. Get myself the elliptical marquee tool from up here in the top right. And I can select the rectangular, elliptical, single row marquee tool, and single column. So the elliptical marquee tool. And on my new layer, which is empty, and by holding down shift, I can create myself this circle. Get my paint bucket tool, make sure my foreground is white. And I click into it, and there we go, we've got the um, circle. And it should still be selected around the edges. And while it is, I want you to press Ctrl and C to copy it and Ctrl and V to paste it, which I've just done. So there I've got two of the shape now. Let's have a look. There we go. Okay. Now if I press Ctrl and T, I can shrink it down. And this is on the top layer, okay, this is on the top circle. I'm pressing Ctrl and T and shrinking it down. And I put it somewhere around the middle here. And I'll get the magic wand tool and click on it. Now you can see what it's done is it's selected that circle, the smaller one in the middle. And I'm just going to use the arrow keys just to make it a bit more central. I'm only doing this because it's 1.5 again. In 2.0 I actually have the option to actually use an align tool to actually align these up in the perfect position. But we'll do it this way, okay? So the circle is now highlighted, it's in position and I'm on the top layer of those two circles. I now select the bottom layer of those two circles, hold down Control and X, which cuts it, go to the top layer and delete it. Okay, so there we go. I should probably move my history out of the way somewhere. You can see there, I'm just going back and forwards on my history, that allows me to go back again. I move my history out of the way somewhat there, because there was another a bin, a dustbin, uh, there underneath it which could get a bit confusing so there we go I've got my circle now I need to put a 7 in it so I'm not going to use impact for this one I'm going to use aerial so let me just delete that that was just a too small a 7 for me to even see I click on it press 7 there we go Control and T for the transform tool, hold down shift and bring it up into position. Now I want the 7 to go right into this circle, so bits like that aren't going to be really acceptable. The 7 has got to match the, into this circle perfectly, so if I bring it out a bit, bring it down a bit, okay that's good. And you'll see down here I've got a piece which is just sticking over the edge of the circle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rasterize my 7, rasterize type, move it back into position there, and then I can get the eraser tool, get a hard edged razor, eraser, and just take that out. Okay? And now control and E to merge it down onto my circle. Get my arrow tool again, control and T and I'm going to transform it to about the same size as my words that I've created. Okay, that looks good. So, there's my storm layer, and that's my layer with the 7 on it. I'm going to merge those together, and now they'll all move together. Okay, so there's the storm tracker 7. Now what we need to do is we need to make it look 3D. So, Control and T again to transform, and hold down Control, and I can grab the corners, and I'm going to make it look like it's coming out of the background, okay? There we go. Maybe a bit less there. Yeah, I like that. That'll do. 